بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد continuing on with our study of عقيدة واسطية فشغل الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله تعالى we reach the part in the treaties which it offers us another very important قاعده or principle related to the related to the uh, principles of al asmai wa sifat and this is the ithbat al makr wa kaid lillahi ta'ala ala ma yaliq bihi so this is affirming that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plans and uh, you know makes plots for those people who disbelieve and are uh, produce people who do evil and Allah does this in a manner that suits his majesty because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that uh, he himself subhanahu wa ta'ala does this in the Quran and we affirm what Allah affirms about himself but the important qaida that we're about to look into is the fact that all of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names his all of his asma'i wa sifat are husna they are all the best and the most beautiful uh, names and attributes and they are all perfect and divine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes are divine and perfect they have no shortcomings nor do they have any uh, any evil meanings or implications and why I emphasize that because regarding this principle it is not permissible for us to refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by a name an ism to give him a, give him a name for example that to say Allah is al-makr or that he is Al Mahal or, or or like these kind of names, which although Allah affirms these attributes for himself, so that's why we're gonna discuss this, to, to let us know when is it permissible to uh, you know what names are permissible to refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if it's mentioned in the Quran uh, and so forth. Are all of the attributes that are mentioned, are they all a part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names? And the answer is no. And that is because anything, here's the qaida here, here's the principle. Anything that is muhtamal, that has, that can either be, uh, has a meaning which can mean something good or something bad, then because of the fact that it's muhtamal, because of the fact that it, it, is it has the possibility of being bad or good, then it is it, it doesn't refer to a name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if Allah refers to it as a sifat of an attribute of himself. So not all sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are his divine names. So let's look at this uh, the evidence here. Waqawluhu wuhuwa shididul mihal. Waqawluhu wa makaru wa makar Allah wallahu khayru makirin. وقوله ومكر ومكر مكرنا مكر وهم لا يشعرون وقوله إنهم يأكلون كيدا وأكلوا كيدا. In these verses, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala affirms for Himself, Tabarak wa Taala, the attributes of of uh, planning and uh, plotting, so to speak. In the first verse, Allah the Almighty says about Himself, and He the Mighty in strength and severe in punishment. And in the other verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and they disbelievers plotted to kill Jesus, alayhi salatu wasalam, and Allah planned too. And Allah is the best of planners. And in the other verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, so they plotted a plot and we planned a plot while they perceived not. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, Verily they are but plotting a plot against you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I too am planning a plan. Uh, in those verses, those verses uh, illustrate for us the, the attributes of plotting and planning. And as Shaykh Sada bin Fawzan 
Hafidhullah Ta'ala mentions in his explanation, he brings us some very important uh, principles here. He says that those verses that they, they affirm for us that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes himself as planning and plotting. And that the and that these are attributes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses in reality. However, that there are two ways, for example, when it comes to Kaid, Akidu Kaido, uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Tariq, that Al Kaid or to plan or plot to plan uh, is of two types. The negative type or the the bad type is when you uh, plan against someone who is uh, who should not be planned against, meaning they don't have the right to be plotted and planned against. Maybe they're a person of, of righteous conduct and so forth and they're a person who's innocent and so forth. And then there is the other type of planning. And it is planning or plotting for those people who are deserving of punishment and deserving of being plotted against. The first type of planning we mentioned or plotting is mithmum, meaning it is sinful. And the second type uh, is mamdur, that it is praiseworthy. So due to the fact that Cade and Mekr, these attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the, not the, the, the attributes themselves of plotting and planning are muhtamil, that they can also, they can mean good and they can mean bad. We only attribute the good to Allah because he is perfect in, in, in his perfect uh, divine attributes. So we only attribute the good to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And although we attribute the good to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there, we cannot say, give Allah, that does not uh, mean that that is one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although it's an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it is not a divine name. We don't call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-ka'id al or al-makr, uh, al meaning the planner or the plotter. There's no, those are not names of for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those are, although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses those attributes. And another very important principle is that related to this is that these attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they only, they only refer to uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, possesses these divine attributes in relation to counter, uh, counteracting his creation. So for example, they plotted, so Allah plotted, and Allah is the best of plotters. Or they planned, and, and, and Allah planned, and he is the best of planners. So these attributes, these Attributes and these are sifat, as we mentioned, fa'liya. They have to do with actions that Allah the Almighty does. These attributes, you only find them in the Quran mentioned in relation to muqabil. Uh, these are sifat muqabil uh, attributes of his creation. So you only find that Allah refers to himself as plotting and planning related to those people who are evil, who are plotting and planning against the believers and plotting and planning against righteous people. So this is a attribute that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses, his divine attributes, and it is only from the bab of giving akuba, of giving uh, punishment to those people who are deserving of punishment. And those are related to those af'al, that we mentioned. Another important thing, this is what Sheikh Haras 
Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said in his explanation here, he mentioned when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Inna akhdahu alimun shadeed. That <clears throat> Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in the Quran, Verily his seizure is painful and severe. Meaning that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, now he's the most beneficent and the most merciful. But he's also the most severe. And when he punishes his, his those, those disobedient ones and the hypocrites and so forth, that he's severe in his punishment. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So although he's the most merciful, he is also the most severe in punishment if you do not take his warning. If you do not heed his warnings that Allah has given us out of his infinite grace, mercy, and favor. This verse in which uh, Sheikh Haras, Rahimahullah ta'ala, referred, he uh, said, this, the verse in which Allah has described himself as the best uh, in planning means that Allah has the power to enforce planning swiftly. Some ulama of the Salaf have explained the meaning of Allah's planning with the slaves in the sense that He awards them favors despite their sins. So some of the Salaf, they said that this, uh, that Allah is swift and, and, and in, his, in, in His planning, uh, they explained it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, His planning uh, with his slaves in the sense that he awards them, he gives them reward despite their wicked sins. Meaning that we, we do so many sins during the day and the night, but Allah still blesses us with many blessings, with air, with water, with another day to breathe, another day to live, uh, health for those who are blessed with health, our family for those who are blessed with family, and all of our other relations, those who are favored to, and blessed to have a job. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most merciful, and He is our razak, He's the provider and sustainer. So although we commit sins during the day and the night, some of us more than others, some of us falling into the major sins, and Allah still gives you another shot, another shot, another chance at Tawbah. And so this is in reference to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's planning. And this is the way he gives them a long rope. When they commit a sin, he rewards them with a favor in return, but they do not understand it. The hadith, and then in uh, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he said, when Allah rewards a slave in spite of his sin, then he must understand that Allah is giving him a long rope. So we ask and beg our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us forgiveness and grant us guidance and bless us to be of those who do not hang ourselves by that long rope, who do not continue to persist in sin without making tawbah and coming back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then be those who are mustahik for the punishment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. And those are just some of the benefits, and I think that's sufficient as far as us going into those attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we, as the, the prayer is, uh, it's, uh, the, the adhan has been called, so we need to prepare ourselves for the salat. And we will continue on in our dars uh, in the next sitting, bi idnillah ta'ala, and try to get through uh, the text at a little bit quicker of a pace. Once we get through these very the important things that need to be uh, emphasized and mentioned, and as we're emphasized and mentioned by Ahlul Sunnah, by the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah, Ahlul Hadith, wa Ahlul Fiqh, wa Ahlul Basira, wa ulama wa ulama Rubbaniyun, and we ask Allah the Almighty to forgive us of our many sins and anything I said that was correct was from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم